Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh Barber and I'm so glad you're here with me today. Today we're diving into a brand new creator. Uh, what the hell is her name? Melina something or other? Melina Sicchiati. Never heard of her, but when I get 10 messages within an hour of some video, then I'm gonna go look at it. And that's what people told me to do here. They want me to take a look at this video. It's something weird about some stuff. I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out together because that's what we do. So let's go. All right, so here she is. Melina Sicchiati looks like an influencer like anybody else. Her description is, you are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Something tells me she's a Christian. In a world filled with compassion and judgment, never forget that you're wonderfully made by a creator or not. She's a Christian. She's a hardcore Christian. Maybe Mormon. She's got 71.5 million views, which means she's made lots of money. Lots and lots and lots of money. Okay, let's see what our video content's all about. The video I'm doing today is the Lord is doing something good. Okay, her most popular video is, of course, 30 hour child labor. The vag on the TV while your baby pops out. Yay! And then she's got untold truth about saving yourself from marriage. So she's purity culture. I'm catching up on that now. She's purity culture. 2.9 million views on the purity culture. And then right below her purity culture uh, picture is her blanking out something and her boobs popping out. So I don't, I don't believe you already. I don't. So a lot of people like me covering this type of stuff because I come from a Christian background as an ex-pastor. I tend to have a little bit more of insight into theology and things that they're spewing to tell you if they're right or wrong. And generally they're all wrong. I promise you. So without further ado, let's break down this video. It's quite long and let's see what's happening here. People are, seem to be outraged and I don't know why. So I like to be surprised like you. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Let's go find the outrage. Hey, you guys. What are you wearing? What is this? You're wearing like a sports bra with a... Okay. I can just say I'm very thankful the Lord is in control of things. I am so thankful that... I already don't like this vibe. It's this space cadet vibe I'm getting from her. Like, I know Christians like this. Okay, I know lots of Christians who like are just like, oh, like the vibe is the Lord, and I just am so thankful and stuff. They're the type of people who are like, God told me to break up with you. That's who they are. I don't have to carry this burden of control, and sometimes we get this like false sense that we are in control of things and that we have. Well, you're not in control of your lighting, please. Better light, please. And a better microphone. Because it looks like you have this thing set in like five and your program's like, I need to turn it up. And all you hear, it sounds like crickets from space. Power over things. And then we are so quickly humbled and reminded that God is in control and everything is just like in his hand. And he's just like. Is God just like, is he like, just like, he's just like, hey, like, like, why are you wearing that shirt, Kurt Cobain shirt over your sports bra? Like, I got this. Um, so before I even like start this video, I want you to, first of all, before I even start this video, when your entire whole platform is God, but in the end, it's really about you, your looks, your decorations, your makeup, your looks, <laughs> your aesthetic. I don't believe anything you're going to say anymore. There's not really a lot of genuine people out there representing Christ in this influencer space. And you know why? It's because it takes a narcissistic D-bag to, to be an influencer, right? And p people need to hear what I have to say. So already, it's disingenuous and I haven't even started yet. I haven't even started yet. To kind of pull those walls down. I feel like a lot of us have so many walls put up and have been hurt and betrayed and have trauma and like all these preconceived ideas of who God is, um, mm -hmm. that it just really distorts the true image. Are you going to tell us who God is? Of him and that anything mentioning Christ or anything having to do with Jesus, we automatically just like put this wall up and we're like, no, we just guard our heart. Um, so I just, what, what are you saying? I just want to pray and ask that you just like slowly let those walls down, start like just slowly chipping away thanks christianese Ugh, i already don't like it i already don't like when you put the walls up jesus can't get over the walls 
and you, Jesus wants to get around the walls and you keep putting walls up. Jesus and God don't need your walls. Your walls mean shit to Jesus and Christ. They don't mean shit. Jesus will do what he wants. God will do what he wants with your life. You don't really have a say. Sort of. But this bullshit, garbage stuff, like Youth Pastor 101, stop talking about shit that doesn't make any sense. Thanks. At those pieces of brick and just like let that come down. I've got a hole in my body and it's God-shaped. And only God can fill it. You heard of that one, anybody? Go to church when they grew up? Okay. Um, for even just a moment. Um, just a moment, though. video is titled that the Lord is doing something. And the last 24 hours have been a very, very... Like, I don't know if you can just tell by the smile on my face. I have this unexplainable joy. <laughs> I can tell by this video, the vibe of this video, is that something... I, there's no... There's not unexplainable joy. It's unexplainable anxiety is what it looks like to me. That there's no other way than to describe it as being a holy joy that can only come from the Lord. And despite all of the... This girl has so much holy joy from the Lord that she turned her comment section off. <laughs> this video, by the way. All her other videos have comment turn section turned on, so... We'll see. The slander and the hatred and evilness that the world has, I can't stop smiling okay. and that is how you know the lord is in control of this and he has his hand in this because <laughs> no what is this that she's talking about in what maybe it's because i don't know this channel what does he have his hand in that makes you uncontrollably smile that the haters are coming after you for what is it no way can anyone steal this joy from me because my joy comes from you're on youtube someone will steal your joy i promise you him regardless of what external things are going on and things out of my control mm -hmm. um, and I have such a peace such a Sh uh, such a shoulder hanging out look at my you don't this is like what she's wearing is so meticulously put together and not it's not a mistake she just throw it on and be like uh that what she's dressed like is important okay joy and peace like I just don't know how else to say it. Like, I feel so tranquil. Um, and there's no other thing that could bring that other than Jesus Christ. Um, I have quite a okay. few... Why'd you turn off the comment section then? Different verses here that... Oh, Lord is she going to read scripture? Here we go. Let's do this. ...has just been thrown at me, you guys. Like... Did Jesus put these scriptures on your heart? It is insane. Um, but there was one about joy. I seem, I seem to have lost my scripture on joy. Micah, do you have it? Micah 316. Grab some cocoa, some vinegar socks, and spaghetti dance. That's as it is written. That I wanted to share with you guys that I feel like it is exactly what I have been going through. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and crown I receive for my works. And then seven says, then you will experience God peace with ex Stay in school. Sorry. And then just four, edit it. Four seven says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind as you live in Jesus Christ. And this verse, like, had I read this a week ago, I probably would have not really understood it or fully had um, been able to grasp it. But the last day, I've like fully been able to grasp. Oh, yeah. That we will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace. If you are sitting in God's peace, again, why did you take off your comment section? So much peace. Peace. Peace will guard our hearts and mind as we live in Jesus Christ. And this has just been 
one of the truest things I've ever experienced because there's no way, there's no way that anyone could ever just like see and hear these hor horrific things that people say and these things that people come up with and will photoshop and make it to look like such a bad thing when in reality it couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. Um, I'm out of the loop. Did somebody Photoshop her onto some PRN or something? Or, or is she being called over something in the past and she's saying that it was Photoshopped? What is she saying here? I wish I was in the loop. And there's no way that someone could go through that and like have a smile on their face or just like not be sure how to handle it. Um, so I don't really know where the Lord is going to take this video. Um, my prayer and what I've been asking my prayer warriors my friend group is to just let the lord do his thing notice how christians do this a lot my prayer warrior my prayer warriors your prayer warriors she has put herself in an elevated position of power amongst other people she is in the battle and these people are her prayer warriors hers hers this, this language already, I can tell that she goes to a non-denominational church that has zero foundation in the Bible. My prayer warriors piss off. Um, and you just get out of the way. And I am not one that is very soft-spoken, like Milena, at least. I okay. do let my flesh get to me, obviously. I can see um, it there. So she's, she, what, your flesh get to you. What is she saying here? And I remember yesterday being like, I don't want to make a video because it's just not going to do anything. <laughs> like I'm going to obviously be upset. I'm very hormonal. I, I'm going to cry. And it's just nothing. What did she do? <laughs> Man, did I come into this unprepared? Unto okay. So, uh, newest, her video was, I can't start my week without doing this. Vlog, midwife appointment, pregnancy Q&A. What did she do? What did she do? Productive is going to come out of it. Um, and then the Lord was like, it will if you just step out of the way. and let No, the Lord didn't say that. Let me use you. Um, and it just reminded me of David and how small David was and how insignificant David who? he felt and how this teeny tiny little rock that he used made this giant just fall it wasn't a teeny tiny rock. It was probably the size of this Vegemite, by the way. This is when you, you know, when someone hasn't done any research in the Bible, what they do is they listen to their shitty pastors, probably goes to Hillsong or Elevation or something. And they make their own like little scripture things and their own little messages based off what they heard. He is a teeny tiny rock. Dude, the slings that David used against Goliath, that shit could kill anybody. Just saying, it's like getting shot with a bullet in the head. It's not like he threw a Cheerio at the guy and he fell over, okay? Yes, God was there. Of course, God was in David. But it's just, let's be real. Stop diminishing what it actually was, too, because you want to add some realism to the story. Because people want to know that if it did go down, it went down. And die. <laughs> like, isn't that insane? And it reminds me of Moses and how... He didn't want to be used. He didn't know how to be used. He didn't think he could do it. And the Lord was like, let me do it. So that's what I'm going to let him do today. Um, she has now compared herself to Moses, the author of the Old Testament law. Wow. <laughs> okay. This ought to be good. Last night, I was woken up at 3.03. .03. I've been woken up around 3 o'clock every single day the past week. What is happening here? Um, and sometimes it is because... Oops, it is because... <laughs> she broke her pen. <laughs> as my baby is crying. Other times it's because I have to pee. But the Lord constantly wakes me up at that time. Stop saying stupid shit like this, people. This is why nobody wants to go to church. The Lord isn't waking you up. Your bladder is. Or your child is. Can the Lord do things? Sure. But just stop saying, like, the most, the Lord brought me down to get this hard drive. No, he didn't. Stop saying dumb shit like this. And it's a time that the world is so peaceful, and I'm able to just listen. And I'm able to just sit and just hear what he has to say. And he had a lot to say yesterday. Did he? Did you text back and forth? Um, my good friend Andrew actually 
sent me a voice memo yesterday. And it was it from the Lord through Andrew? When I went to get up to go to the bathroom, um, I had seen that he sent me a voice memo. And I was like, I don't want to listen to this right now. Like, I just want to go to bed. I just want to sleep. I'm tired. I had a very emotionally draining day. Um, and the Lord was like, you need to listen to that voice memo. And I was like, How does this lady have 600,000 subscribers? Is she funny in other videos or something? What am I missing? Like, okay. So I start listening to it and he was just speaking so much truth and just sharing so much wisdom. Um, and he started sharing, I believe, I'm telling you, you guys, there's been so many verses that I've been reading that I can't remember which one it was that Andrew was talking about. Um, but it was just talking, it was, I believe- GET TO THE VERSE! Um, Can you imagine me on Sunday morning and this girl giving you a message? I would be like throwing shit on the stage. Just heckling her. Get into the verse, lady! You're terrible! You suck at this! Psalms 6, but it just talks about God's justice and how God, at the end of the day, does get justice. And okay, obviously you guys are going to tell me what's going on. Has she been wronged in some way and she's now saying that God is going to be my justice? What happened here? That's all I'm, I'm trying to pick up her vibe here, which she's using the Bible for, to, you know, to proof text everything she's going through at this point. So up to this point, it's that God is going to give you peace beyond understanding. So it sounds like something has not been given her peace, probably some problems. And then the second one is, is that God is going to be your justice and he'll smite your enemies and shit like that. What happened? And how sometimes it can be just really hard going through this and how we think we have control of things and we just don't. He is in full control. You said this five times already. Things, And there have been so many things that have happened that I'm like, Lord, why, why is this happening? But like, why so many stories, you guys? There was a story of you guys. another person in high school and cheating on Jordan when I wasn't even sleeping with Jordan. Oh, oh, I'm starting to catch on now. Something tells me there is a, probably uh, a thread. It's like a tattle thread or something like that or on Discord about her. And so, so now I'm starting to catch on. So she talks about purity culture and waiting, saving yourself for marriage. And is she being called out that she did not save herself for marriage? Like she's, a lot of these people in churches, they stand on this proclamation. Like I saved myself for marriage. I am clean and holy and untouched and blah, blah, blah. Except for they did everything else, by the way, especially through Bible college or any Christian camp. They did other things. Just saying. Even if you did it in your mind, Melina, you did it. Sorry, that's in the Bible. But now I'm starting to catch on. So there's probably some kind of drama going on around in the back end where they're catching on that she she possibly cheated or she is not a virgin. And that's basically what her whole thing is probably built on, being a virgin, wait, saving herself from marriage. Like there are, there are things that have been so clear to me that the enemy is trying. Oh, and this is what Christians will do. This is what a lot of uh, pastors will do too. A lot of like prolific pastors who have a lot to protect money, by the way. Um, what they'll say to their, their people is that this is the devil's doing. The devil is trying to bring this church down because we're doing such amazing things here. The devil's trying to bring her down because she's got a message. It's the devil. Hey man, often the devil doesn't need to do shit just, just to watch you fall apart. That's it. To do. And at the end of the day, the enemy is furious. He is furious with this ministry. He is furious with the story. He's furious with what the Lord is doing and stirring in people's hearts and it's I'm lost something tells me she's got a ministry or a she's a influencer of purity culture and the devil hates her for it I don't think so making him mad he's visibly angry the devil is visibly angry you've seen the devil or something or is there something you're not telling us there I just watched Ghostbusters yesterday, so I do believe everything she's saying. And it is very, very obvious and seen. Um, is she saying, okay, I'm, I got, because I don't know anything. It sounds like it's very obvious and seen because people are leaving her hate comments. That's what I'm going to guess. And people who know her will come at me and tell me. And so I've just been like, why, Lord? Like, why are you letting like, this happen? Like, like, why, Lord? Like, why? Like, like, why are you like letting this happen? I'm like Job here. I'm the Moses. Like, why? Don't you see my, I got my eyes did right? My eyebrows were dead. My nails are dead. You see this 
amazing Lululemon top I got sponsored by? Like, why? Like, what's going on? I thought we had a ministry plan. God? Everyone around me is affected by this, and I don't know what to do. Like, it seems like people are fishing for any and everything that they can find. Um, Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> people can. People have told me I murdered someone in Alaska. That I'm accuse me of R. They accuse me of child R. Shannon Rose, Love Meg. Yeah, you know who you are. People have accused me of lots and lots of things, like insane things. The comments some people of my mod send me. Oh my gosh, it's actually crazy. But welcome to the internet. It just savor it, laugh at it, and move on. It doesn't matter. What is her problem? And the most recent thing has not only been that people are fishing for things, but people are going and photoshopping and making up stuff, which is a whole nother thing. Um, whatever you guys are seeing floating around is not true. We have gotten, we have the information, we have it, and we've gotten it searched and we've gotten it filled through and you can see that it has clearly been edited. What is going on? I need to know now. I'm invested. And stamped on with another username. So whatever you are seeing, it is not factual. It is not something that someone wrote. It is something that someone fabricated and wrote out and is impersonating and making it seem like this person is saying this. So, so I sort of know what's going on. I don't know the context of all the issues. Good. I kind of like that. I don't. But what she's now saying is that all those attacks and all those things the, that Lord is on my side and I have peace from it. She is, this is what a lot of Christians do. I mean, Mars Hill intensifies. Okay. Mark Driscoll did this shit. Every pastor that falls down does this stuff. I'm being attacked. And so God, like, why? Like I'm totally perfect. Right. So she's going to use the Bible to debunk it. I guess. Um, I just keep asking him, like, why? Like, can't you just make this go away? Can't you make those forms? I have not thought of that before, actually. Don't hire lawyers. Uh, Jesus, can you just make my haters go away, please? God's like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll just delete their channels. That's against YouTube's terms of service to ask God to delete other people's channels. Just so you're aware. Guys, if you're not understanding how crazy this is and the, the power that this person thinks she has, look, in your own mind, in your prayer, in your own time, I kind of get that. You can have these conversations, but she's exuding so much personal executive Christian power far beyond anything that she's ever been given ever. I promise you what she's saying here is just a pure deflection. And I don't even know what she's talking about. That's how crazy this is. It's just go away. Like, isn't that such a small thing for you? Like, it's, such, it's so easy for you to do that. Um, yeah, God's definitely going to delete other people's accounts that are making fun of you. God really just, he sees that. You ever heard of free will? You get that. You want to take free will away from other people, right? You know that God has a, an infinite plan of grace and understanding for everybody. People can do what they want. God's not really going to step in. Although, if you go back and watch my Bible stories of swearing about the Moses story, there are questions. But I'm sure he's a little bit busy for your Instagram problems. And that was something that I was kind of wrestling with when I took my break. And the Lord was like, I like, will make you... I, the Lord, am like going to like totally help you with like things. Like. Of this. And I don't doubt him. If one single person's soul and life is saved from the slander or from from the gossip and from what seems to be so hideous. If he's a- I'm gonna I'm have to do a follow-up because you guys are gonna school me on what the hell is going on. Well, to take that and save someone's life and bring them home, then it is worth everything and more. So, something's going on. She's getting hated on the internet for something she likely said or did, and there's receipts of it. But she's like, man, if one person can become saved because of my shitty behavior, it's worth it. The problem with this type of understanding of the Bible is that it's garbage. You are supposed to be representing Christ. So if there are all these shitty things about you out there, it's not that those people are going to come to Christ because of it, but likely going to be turned off of the gospel in Christ because of it. That's the problem. You guys see that's what 
You know, when God says, I will spit you out of my mouth, if you're lukewarm, you're hot or you're cold. If you sit on the fence, you're gone. That's the problem here. If you are sh- shit in the bed in every other way as a Christian, okay? And again, I'm not telling you that I'm a perfect Christian at all, guys. If anything, I'm cold. I'm not sitting on no fence because I'm not going to waver. Right now, I'm probably pretty cold. I love Jesus. I do believe in him. But at this point, I am reassessing what it means to be a Christian, okay? Religiously and everything else, scripturally, everything. But at least I'm cold, okay? People like this who don't know anything about the Bible, they're so lukewarm because they shift day to day to match what they needed to work match for. B-Dong, what's her face? Brittany Dawn is gonna is about to be sued. She does this same shit, and we're going to cover her this week too. This shit is getting crazy. People using Christianity and the church and everything to prop up their lifestyles that make them tons of money, this needs to stop. Churches need to start stepping in to these influences, go to the church and say, you need to stop or don't go here. So I really do believe the Lord will use that for his favor. And Again, the, and I can agree with her. The Lord will use anything for his glory and his favor because it's the Lord. But she seems to be thinking that he's going to use her shitty brand and her aesthetic. <laughs> I don't know what she's thinking, man. This is weird. We'll use that to glorify him because he can make the ugliest things into the most beautiful things. And I am so excited to see what comes out of that. And Are you? Sound, you don't sound excited. I am, again, just so joyful because he has been so faithful and so good. And this peace and this joy. You said this. There's, I can't fight it. I can't, there's just no other way to say it. Um, I know. You said it three times the exact way you said it the first time. So I, I believe you. One thing that I... Backing up a little bit with waking up early in the morning. um, After reading this voice memo and just like hearing different scripture, I just hopped on my Bible app because I had this burst of energy. um, And I just started bouncing around through scripture. And one thing that our church has been talking about is our different, um, not fruits of the spirit, but our different, um, sorry guys, I've just written so much. Okay, here we go. Okay. Our different gifts, our oh spiritual God. gifts. And our church was talking about it. And then yesterday I was reading Romans, and boy, do I love the book of Romans. I'm going to. Sh- boy, do I love my gifts of the spirit. One is aesthetic. My aesthetic is my ugly pink cushions behind me and this pink wall. Aesthetic. Sure. A lot from Romans with you guys today, but I really, really enjoy the book of Romans. But Romans hey, get to it! Through eight says about gifts, and I. Don't remember if in high school at some point I knew what my spiritual gift was or what, but I remember what it was and I was like, Wow, well, must have been really, really important. I should take the time to figure that out today. Like, Lord, reveal that to me today. If you don't know what your spiritual gift is and you grew up as a Christian, again, my spiritual gift is snark. If you don't know what your spiritual gift is, uh, by the time you're, you're an adult, I mean... Have you ever gone to any youth group ever? They just tell you what it is. And they, generally, it's what needs to be filled in the volunteer part of the church. We think your spiritual gift is parking. <laughs> your spiritual gift is watching the a-hole kids in the problematic one in room number five. That's your spiritual gift. Volunteering? Okay, thanks. Sign up here. So in Romans 12, 7, encouraging, and if it... If it is to give, give generously. If he has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do She's it. reading New Living Translation, by the way, form of the Bible. Big gladly. Um, and after that, I actually found a website that you're able to go and... Um, and at first, I was like, this is probably weird, but I was like, Lord, just lead me to the website that you think will help serve me best and help me figure out what my spiritual gift is, or if it's in your word, like, lead me to it. Um, yeah, it's right there in Peter www.spiritualgifts.com Are you kidding me right now? People who live like this are the reason I absolutely hate church. The people, the church has become this type of person, by the way. It used to be filled with way worse people too. Let's be real. The church hasn't really done anything good since like, I don't know, 1700s. It's for real. Like nothing. There was no really faith-based stuff. As soon as you get into the into the age of like the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, every church just went, just gone. 
No gospel centric shit exists anymore. You've got a couple of great leaders out there, but that's it, man. Church is balls these days. And I'm not afraid to say it. And with my results coming back, my spiritual gifts are leadership. I'm sure. Aesthetic. And teaching, which is. Well, that's debatable. You can even get your notes. Kind of funny given what I do. Um, what does she do? It's like, not that it was very obvious, but it's just funny how that lines up. What so, do you do? With leadership. You sell like oils and shit? The gift of leadership is a divine strength or ability to influence people at the level. My, she just told everybody, my spiritual gift is to be an influencer. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you guys. That's what she said there. The narcissism we are, are we seeing right now, the scriptural, biblical abuse of narcissism is insane. My spiritual gift is influencing on the internet. While directing and focusing them on the bigger picture vision or idea. Um, and I loved that so much. Because I just had to find something that aligned with what I was doing and that would let, look, sounded right. And I'm going to read Like people who believe in like Sagittarius and Cancer and, you know, the, 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 the other ones. I don't even know what the other ones are. That stuff's BS. Um, first, Timoth first Timothy 3. Why did you people make me watch this? This is shit. Wow, your spiritual gift is teaching. Stephanie's spiritual gift is not writing notes. Here's what your spiritual gift is not. Taking proper notes. It is not putting the right amount of blush, because that is way too much blush. It is looking like you're doing the walk of shame from a college dormitory. Your spiritual gift is not whatever you're wearing here. That's not a spiritual gift. So Keep working, though. Let me jump over to Hebrews. So she just skipped that part? Okay. Can you just cut? Do you not know how to edit? Do you not know how to edit at all? Also, I want to stop you guys here. For people who actually listen to this thing for like inspiration, biblical inspiration, all that stuff. What these people are doing is they're, and this is what a lot of pastors do. They're going to cherry pick. Some pastors can cherry pick one scripture of the Bible and make an entire series, like a 10 part series at their church on it. One scripture and tear that shit in so many different ways to give you messages on how to be. I don't know, an influencer. I don't know. But what people fail to realize is you got to read that shit in order. It's not just take one scripture and then this is what God has spoken to me today. The Bible is in itself a, a narrative that's tied together by the things that precede it and that go after it. I'm so sick of people taking one scripture and be like, see, look at this amazing thing that's on my life. No, lady, there's so much before and after that scripture. So this just kind of goes with the idea that he will equip us. And for me, it was like equipping me for this video. Um, well, he equipped you wrong. We're halfway through and I haven't heard shit yet. And just using my spiritual gift wisely. And it did convict me because with... So she's... <laughs> this, is, this is like... Bible college year one. Okay, I'm going to need to find scriptures that lend themselves to this argument I'm about to make. And it's called proof texting. So you want to find something in the Bible. So you believe something, right? This is what a lot of people believe uh, the Bible talks about homosexuality as well. Okay, you want to believe something. And so you look up the thing. Where does it say in the Bible this thing? And they'll bring you the scripture. It exists in some way. And then they do that be like, okay, so I'm a leader, right? I'm an influencer. So now I need a scripture on that. And let me find another one. And then she'll write that down. And this is, this is, she does, has no business delving out the gospel the way she's doing it right now. What is she getting at here? So she's saying she has such a large platform and she messes up using it all the time. I don't get it. I don't, I honestly, this entire jib jab, nothing of substance have yet come out of this video. 14 minutes and 30 seconds in zero substance on anything, nothing. And having such a large audience and the leadership ability and not taking it so seriously. So, for example, there are some things like my lip filler or nail sculpt, things that, not that I'm sweeping under the rug, but things that I just have not felt the Lord call me to talk about yet. <laughs> I do. She just gave me the craziest thought in my brain as someone who grew up reading the Bible. And if you think about what churches honestly believe right now about the big T.R.A.N.S. issue right now, if you think about that for a second, about how the church thinks that being trans is wrong. Okay. Wrong. They think it's wrong. There's not any scripture to back it up, by the way, but they're like, well, God made you the way you are. And so why would you want to change that? 
And so you could use that. Sure. If you do want to use it, you know, there's not really a scripture that backs it up. Maybe there is. I don't know. I'm just saying in my experience, trying to think if there's a scripture that backs up someone changing who they think that they are. But she's saying, I don't want to talk about my lip filler and all the, the surgeries I got and everything else. But if you think about that for a second, just on a fundamental basis of itself, there are so many Christian women who claim to be Christ-like, who claim, who claim the Bible, who will tear down transgender people, who will tear down uh, LGBTQ people and people with identity issues that we would consider that the church would consider issues. And yet so many of those same women and men will get plastic surgery on their boobs, on their faces, on their lips, on their eyes, on their asses, on their bellies, on their arms, changing who they are, changing your hair color, changing partners. Often when they're already married, just saying, just saying men, same thing. Men will change who they are personality wise. They will completely change. They will get, they will go to the gym. If, if you look at Stephen Furtick, that guy's on roids. That shit is dangerous and it changes your body. So I'm just saying, I know that's a shallow argument, but I really, she just made me stand here and think about that for a second. I'm like, ah, very, very important thing here. How so many women and men in the church will change everything about them. But when someone wants to change this about them, that's the sin. But how many pastors stand up on stage who are morbidly obese? You know, that's a sin too, right? Just saying. So she doesn't want to talk about her lip fillers and shit. Okay. Um, and a boundary that I have is that I will talk about things when I feel the Lord leading me to talk about it. I've learned far long ago that if I just do something because I'm being coerced or bullied into talking about something, there's nothing fruitful that comes out of it. And I So... When the Lord tells me I need to talk about my lip fillers, I'll talk about my lip fillers. Again, putting the blame on God for your shortcomings, also a sin, dumbass. You're telling the world that you're basically, what I'm, what I'm starting to get from this is that she sounds like a judgmental D-bag to her audience, right? That's all I'm picking up. I could be wrong. But in the same time, people are calling her out on probably the same things that she's, they're calling her a hypocrite. And she's like, well, you know, but the Lord will tell you. And she puts the blame on God, stopping her from telling you those things. You guys hearing this stuff? It gets pretty convoluted and it gets pretty deep, but that is what she's doing. She's take, she's standing, putting God in front of her saying, God doesn't want me to talk about this shit. That's bullshit. That is a bullshit theological stance. And that's why, that's what's wrong with the church. They all do this. Wow, this got deeper than I thought. I feel like the Lord is still working through me in certain things. He is still working on these things. So oh. until I... So you got everything else figured out. But those things that you have shortcomings with, look, I know I have shortcomings in these areas that I probably judge you on, but it's because the Lord is still working on me in those things, guys. He's, don't make me cry. He's working on me still. So now I still want lip injections and fake boobs and all that stuff. It's just I'm being worked on by a doctor, but God's working on me as well. This is what's called a theological straw man shit argument. You can't just take a stance for the Lord and at the same time do the shit that you're probably calling other people out for, but then say, well, the Lord's working on that for me. Well, maybe the Lord's working on them too, lady. Who is this lady? I'm out of that and I feel the calling to talk about it. I won't. Not because I'm sweeping it or because I don't want accountability, but because... That's exactly why you won't. Because... I serve a God and I fear God and I want to make sure that I am honoring him. So she's saying, I need God's permission to share things with you guys. And if he doesn't want me to share it, I won't. Well, it just so happens that those things are the things I don't want to talk about. So <laughs> convenient. So convenient, lady. <laughs> what an idiot. First, um, and I will not let the fear of people overpower that. Um, okay. And And she's so confident about it too, right? These people who are like this, they, they're so confident. Look, I don't have any shortcomings. And those that you think I have shortcomings, look, it's just the Lord working on me. So those shortcomings aren't shortcomings. They're going to build me into the woman of the Lord, unlike any other woman of the Lord. So, yeah, there's just been so many different verses. Like John 10, 10 says the thief. Don't forget, she's cherry picking scripture. Proof texting. Comes to steal kill and destroy i come so that you may have life and may have it abundantly and may have a large following on instagram um and this is so evident the enemy is trying also 
please stop using the scripture as like life abundantly, meaning that you need to be wealthy. You need to have cars and airplanes and super rich things and caviar and overflowing shelves of food and where you don't give anything. Life abundantly in that scripture means life in Christ. And just so you guys don't ever forget it, when Jesus said to the guy, when the guy said, Jesus, what do I need to do to have to follow you and have life in you? Boom, sell all your shit, give it to the poor, then come hang. So they get these two things way screwed up. Life abundantly in Christ does not even mean wealth at all. Could mean for some people, yes, because some people can be trusted with it. But for the most part, almost 99.99% of the other people, it doesn't mean anything like that. And they will use this scripture to, to sell their lifestyle, to justify the shit and the debauchery of their lifestyles. So hard to just steal and kill and make beautiful things what they're not and paint this horrible, horrific picture. Um, so again, my fall video is going to be so eye opening because I'm going to find out and I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, because she's like, my beautiful picture has been ruined. Like this lady who did the Jesus picture. That's what, her, that's what happened to me. When it's not, and the Lord says that he has come so that we may have life and may have it abundantly. Um, I want someone who says this scripture. I wish I could be in the room there. Okay. Expand on what you think life abundantly means. Please. Please tell me what you think it means. I'm all ears. Well, I think it means that like I'm an influencer, right? And so that means more ad reads, more sponsorships. Maybe I can get a Range Rover or something, you know, abundantly. Like good aesthetic, a lot of browns and cream colors, you know? That's what I think. That's what she thinks it honestly means. I'm not kidding. Exodus 14, 14 says the Lord will fight for you. If you're going to bounce all over the entire Old and New Testament, everything you've said doesn't make any sense. Just going to point that out. And you only have to be silent. And like, isn't that so nice? Wait, what? Like, he's just calling at me. Um, Exodus 14, 14 says the Lord will fight for you. And you only have to be silent. So I hope the next words out of your mouth are, shit, I've been talking this whole time. You only have to be silent. So what I think she's going to cherry pick this to say is, I'm going to be silent on those things that I want to talk about. My fillers and my surgeries and the bad things that you guys have found out about me. That's what I'm going to be silent on. So God will fight for me on those things I'm silent for. But otherwise, I'm going to do an entire video of me talking. And like, isn't that so nice? Like, he's just calling us to be silent and just calling us to be. And he will fight for us. He will handle it. He's saying... So why are you talking then? I got your back, sis. You just be silent. And you're not silent. Okay. You're missing that part. You're missing the part where you're not being silent. Are you... The irony. Are you guys hearing this? Oh, my gosh. Um, Hebrews... 13 6 so we can say with confidence the lord is my helper so i have no fear what can mere people do to me and this is so true like well they can drag your shit through the mud especially if you got lots of skeletons in your closet look in the end if you actually have an honest faith and you do believe in jesus and all this stuff if she believes what's coming out of her mouth and everything else she's kind of right nothing can happen to you in the eternal realm you're going to heaven you're good to go new body everything's gonna be great but on earth, shit can happen, especially if you made the bed. You get to lie in it. Things will happen. If lies are out there, come through with the truth. But if there are things, and she just admitted it right there when she just alluded to lip fillers, it was such a weird thing, that type of thing. She doesn't want to talk to you guys about the negative stuff, right? She only wants to talk to you about the positive and the negative, but I'm a Jesus lover. At the end of the day, I remember last year, I always talked about fearing God over people and the Lord is in control of this. Um, Romans what? 12, 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of the Lord. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them. She wants some revenge. I'm noticing too here in this narrative. There are some people that have wronged her. I don't know how. But she wants the Lord's revenge. So evident to me that the enemy is furious. Why do you keep saying the enemy's furious with you? You work for the enemy, lady. Look at your shit. 
If you're an influencer, does she exploit her kids? Because if that's the case, I disregard everything she says. The enemy's not scared of you, you Instagram influencer. He doesn't give a shit. He owns Instagram, lady. He owns social media. Um, and specifically towards me becoming a mother. I have never experienced... So she is a family vlogger. Great. ...such spiritual attack until I became a mom. And the reason for that is because Jordan and I are fearing the Lord. We are righteous parents that are raising our children to know Christ. Uh, okay, let me go look at your channel for a second. Is there babies? Do they have babies? Oh, yeah, they have their kids in there. Is she talking about purity culture? They're like naked half the time on their freaking thumbnails. Towels. So she's a mommy vlogger. Okay, okay. So everything you just said there's a lie. It's a bullshit lie. You're not raising anybody. You're exploiting your child. The end. Nothing else you say past here matters. It is all thrown in the garbage. And I think the enemy is so threatened by that. He is so... Is she honestly this whole video just becoming like, the devil's just jealous <laughs> that's exactly what she's saying here the devil's just jelly devil stop being so jelly of us and our success you're just jealous that's like everybody who hates me says i'm jealous of these family vloggers the devil's just jealous <laughs> threatened by my daughter he's what? threatened by my two-year-old he sees how she is now and he knows that if he can distract me now if he can get me to look away, if he can do something to just get me to stop focusing on my children, that he'll be able to get to her. And I will. Meanwhile, the devil's like, um, I don't even know who she is, peeps. I have no idea. She doesn't even go here. The devil's, <laughs> the devil's like, what? I didn't do that. You blame me for shit. I got other things to do not let him have it the lord will not have it and so what this is so cocky and so incredibly gross what she's saying what essentially my ministry has done is just what it, ministry there's just this fire inside of women this you're you're so confident in your ministry there melina that you shut your comments off on your ministry you're not allowing discourse what are you scared of talking about? If your ministry is so far and you can stand on your message, why did you delete your comment section? Hmm. Hmm. Fire to raise up our children, to be mothers, to step into motherhood, not just to step into it, but step into it with confidence and with strength and exploitation. And to know oh. that we were made to raise these children we are these mama bears that will fight uh, don't use that don't say you're a mama bear and then let me look on your channel as you exploit your child giving them to plutos on the internet for free would a mama bear who's supposed sworn to protect her children literally spoon feed those same children to plutos on the internet my answer is no and i'm right and you're wrong protect them no matter what and we will raise them up to know the lord and that is so intimidating to satan it no it makes him tremble to know that we have this army of mothers that are stop thinking you have this like you're playing in a dangerous game here with satan okay, if you believe what the bible says you don't just play these dangerous games with satan Okay? It's not a game. It's not, it's not an influencer scripture you can find on the internet. You're playing some dangerous effing games. If you believe in the spiritual side of what the Bible says. This lady ain't it. Standing strong and encouraging one another. He is so scared, you guys. like <laughs> The devil's so scared. Watch out, mister. Just thinking about all of my kids, Alethea and Ari, and the one that I'm currently... Of course, her names are Alethea and Ari. Are me holding like the amount of prayer that I pray for these kids that they expand the Lord's kingdom, that they honor him, that they fear the Lord, the enemy. If you're raising your kids on the internet to be influencers, they're not going to do any of that shit. Just sorry. Wrong. Is Especially if you don't know how to read the Bible properly and teach your kids proper theological ways of understand the bible she just proof texted and just cherry picked like 10 verses all over the bible to to just lend themselves to her one message 
That shit is wrong. Well aware of the children we are raising. If I Google her channel and there's Target, going to Target, I'm going to be pissed. Target haul, bras, maternity jeans, and more. <laughs> okay, so she says she's encouraging thousands of mamas. Let's go through this, shall we? Just real quick. I can't start my week without doing this. Midwife pubis gain. Pregnancy Q&A. First time telling our family and friends about baby number three. A bittersweet change in our house. It's all brown, too. There's no color, of course. I'm back. Chatty Kathy. Chatty Chatty. I'm taking a break. See you soon. I'm pregnant with baby three. Uh, young parents date night. Dreaming together finances. Like, what? what is, nothing that you just said there. You're sitting here in towels together. Okay? You're showing off your belly a lot, which is weird, and your camel toe. I don't, I don't understand this. Wait, wait, what? What she just said there, if I were to go to her channel and see tons of things about scripture and how to like raise your kids in the church and how to avoid predators at the church and stuff like that, I could say, yeah. But, oh, here it is. Morning routine with Jesus. Again, you have to set up a camera, pour yourself a cup of hot steaming cocoa, cocoa and read the Bible. It's disingenuous and it's a lie. Sorry. Oh, look, they have merch. Ah, okay. Look, none of this shit is real. It's bullshit. I just wanted to point that out. That you see. And it's something that I feel so strongly called to do just because that is what scripture tells us to do. And so you feel so strongly to exploit your child on the two children, apparently, on the Internet for money. You feel strongly that God has called you to exploit your children on the Internet to say, look what we got at Target. Really? Okay. So encouraging others to do that just really gets the enemy... To do what? Upset. You think encouraging others to exploit their children, go to Target, not have any colors in their homes, angers the devil? Who are you? Stop. Um, and so with the bigger picture here, and it kind of goes back to being... Um, having a spiritual gift of leadership it's that influencing people at their level while directing and focusing on the picture bigger picture vision and idea so for me i see that being this bigger picture of like encouraging women and encouraging families the enemy to do what encourage them to do what encourage them how just stop saying the word encouragement christianese doesn't fly here encourage them how to what Gentle parenting, encourage them to wear brown, to use cloth diapers, to be vegan. Encourage them how? Attacks the family because if you can get into the family, if you can disrupt that, they slow. Oh my God, say slowly. One more time. Slowly trying to get me away, slowly trying to feed these lies into my head. Do you know how you do? You know, avoid all this shit? Get off of the internet, lady. Slowly doing these things to the point where I was just like, wait, I'm sorry, what? So it's so important that we stay rooted in his word all day long. Stay in prayer with him. Pray for your family daily um, and be connected with his word because if not, then... When these little lies sneak in, how could we possibly know that they're trying to sneak in? How could we possibly what? know what he's up to if we don't have that discernment, if we don't have that, um, ability to fight it? And so I am so thankful for what has happened, you guys. I never thought I would say that because... Again, did something absolutely went wrong? Something happened. She's called out for something. And this is her way, I know it, of saying, I don't care that that stuff, because now I know the Lord is with me. So who can be against me? Well, a lot of people are, probably. The Lord just did so much in one day. Like, if he can do that in one day, what can he do in a month? What can he do in six months? Um, I am just very encouraged and excited to see what the Lord is going to do from this it's for such a particular reason. And he has placed so many people in my life. And my friend Andrew was saying that the Lord has put specific Spaghetti? people oh, in my specific, okay. and in specific seats that has unfolded in the last... This shit is so bad. 
this is what you hear at Christian camp from like a leader, a youth leader who's not really good at speaking. Like the Lord has put people on your bus and those seats that are there for a reason. And this side of the seat, you know, the guy might be spitting out the window and you got to step up to the guy and say, God, stop spitting out the window. And that's the Lord's righteous anger. And on this side of the bus, you got Sally and Sally's wearing a really short skirt and you got to bounce some eyes. That's lust coming after you. Sally's a slut. Stay away from Sally. <laughs> like, what the hell? That's 24 hours. Um, God doesn't call to qualify. He qualifies the call. And I'm so thankful for those who are around me. And I'm so thankful for the friendships that I have. Because each of them have poured such wisdom into my oh, life. Oh, my God. Or even, I hope that there was something that came out of this video. Nothing um, but spaghetti. And I love you guys. And the Lord loves you so so much. But not my haters. And he just wants you to come home. So Stop come saying home. that. Oh my god, that was so bad. I don't even know what to think, guys. What did I watch? What did you guys make me watch that for? What did she say? Is it in a video beforehand? Like, this is, this is obviously in response to something. Is it a response to this? Wh what did she say? I'm googling her name. Melina Sicchiati. Okay. Melina Sicchiati addresses a drama around neo-sculpting and lip fillers. So it's about lip fillers? What? Melina is a social media star who makes content on YouTube and has her own podcast. The moment she has 298,000 followers on the platform, unlike her YouTube page, Melina often shares glimpses of personal life on Instagram. At the same time, she collaborates with different brands on her page. Meanwhile, on her YouTube, Melina shares blah, 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 online drama explained. Thank God! Comment read Neo sculpting, so she's done things to her body, and that's what I said. He says December was one heck of a month. I'm so glad to be feeling human again. This pregnancy has been so different and very challenging. I'm so honored and thankful to carry my child. But woof, all the mamas in their first trimester, my heart goes out to you. I've been praying so many things over this baby, and I want to share those with you. I pray for a peaceful, tranquil, and quick labor. I pray he, she knows their worth, and they find their strength in God. I pray this child is so loved, welcomed by Alethea and Ari. <laughs> Anyway, that was weird, but there was some, I love breaking down that scriptural shit so you guys can actually understand how bullshit they are and how you should not listen to these people because they're garbage and they're leading you down a path that is not correct. Okay. Just cherry picking scriptures to match what you needed to say to you in your times of trouble is terrible. Here's what you got to do, Melina. If you're really a Christian, it's called humbling yourself. You ever heard of that? Humility is key. Humble yourself. If you did something wrong, humble yourself and apologize. Jesus likes humble people. He loves everybody. But those who are, who are humiliated and humbled, they have a special place. Okay? If you say, look, guys, you're right. Should have done that shit. My bad. I probably wouldn't have done this shitty video. But you need to be humbled. And maybe I need to be part of that. I don't know. That video was weird. A lot of great scriptural shit going on in there, though. So take a deep breath. <sighs> May the Lord's light shine upon you. The real Lord, not this bullshit Instagram influencer aesthetic Lord that they keep worshiping. It's really weird. But honestly, if you're trying to find God outside of church and all those kinds of things and you've left or you used to be a part of it and you've been disenfranchised and you've been abused and you've left, trust me, there's a, there is a place afterwards where God is waiting. And it's not in a church, I promise you. I know. People are going to be so mad. There are some churches. Nah, I'm sorry. It's just got to be maybe at this point in time, people got to find Christ on their own. And it's really simple to do. So take a deep breath. You're beautiful, gorgeous, and kind, and super damn valuable. Don't you ever forget it. I'll see you tomorrow.